Hi everybody, my name is Justin Stoney and I'm the founder of New York Vocal Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode 86 of Voice Lessons to the World, the show where we want to help you as singers by answering your questions from all over and I'll give you a chance to ask questions later. But our question for this week comes from Justin L. in Davos City, Philippines. Justin, that is a nice name. Justin writes, Dear Justin, how do I develop my chest voice register? Now, Justin, I love this question, love, because we get questions all the time on vocal registers. And this question is going to inspire a new five-part series on vocal registration. So, pack your suitcases, pack your sunglasses, pack your sunscreen, pack your cat. Because for the next five episodes, we're going on a vocal register world tour. That's right, the first stop on our world tour is Chest Voice. We're going to talk about what it is, how it applies to songs, how to develop it, and give you an exercise to practice it. But what is Chest Voice? First of all, it's your speaking voice. Most of us speak in our chest voices. There's some people that speak in head voice. There's some people that speak in falsetto. There's even some people that speak in vocal fry. But most of us speak in chest voice. And this is very good news because truly, if you can speak it, you can sing it, we'll see. But chest voice isn't just our speaking voice. It's also the most thyroarytenoid dominant production. The thyroarytenoid muscle doesn't have to be an intimidating word. It's really just the muscle inside your vocal folds that shortens them and thickens them, lowering the pitch and making things stronger. Chest voice is the most thyroarytenoid dominant vocal register. This is also what gives it the greatest potential for vocal strength. All this shortening and thickening increases what we call CQ, that's closed quotient. It just means how long the vocal cords stay shut in their vibration. Higher CQ equals greater vocal strength, like when we're engaging in a shout, or the call function of our voice, or the stage speaking voice function of our sound, and perhaps even in some kind of belting that we do when we sing. But let's make sure that we know where chest voice is in our vocal range. Because it's so TA dominant, chest voice really likes to live in the lower part of the voice. It's really for your low notes and maybe your middle notes. Some males might be able to go up to E4, perhaps G4. Some ladies might go to A4, maybe all the way up to C5. But at a certain point, it starts to feel and sound shouty and yelly. And that doesn't feel so great for the voice. It's not so good to push chest voice up high all the time when it really wants to live a bit lower. Let's talk about chest voice and style. Because chest voice is such a strong production, it works well in certain styles, but not in others. For example, an operatic or traditional male is almost always in chest voice, whereas an operatic female is almost never in chest voice. In contemporary music though, pop rock, R&B, country, gospel, a female singer will be quite often in chest voice, whereas a male also will be in chest voice, but not as much as he would have been in traditional music. Speaking of that, let's see how chest voice applies to a song. This is Old Man River by Jerome Kern. For our chest voice song, I wanted to think of the chestiest thing I could possibly imagine, and Old Man River came right to mind. Now, I'm no bass, but this is going to be as much uh, TA as my voice can handle. I get weary and sick of trying. I'm tired of living and scared of dying. But Old Man River, he just... Rolling along. Now that's a lot of that call function, that shout function. We certainly wouldn't want something lighter for a song like this. But old man river, he just keep rolling along. It just wouldn't be right. But I don't want to give you the impression that chest voice is only for an operatic sound you can still bring chest voice into a more poppy production. 
but old man river he just keeps rolling along it can still have chest even if it's not operatic for a male and like i say for a female as well so now next let's look at some tips for helping you to sing in chest voice Tip number one is that neutral and low larynxes accommodate chest voice the best. When the larynx is neutral or low, the chords have more slack to them. It gives them a greater mechanical advantage for the stronger sounds. It's actually not so good for them to have a higher larynx and a lot of chest voice. It gets really tight. Hey, hey, it's not so good for you. But the hey, hey kind of feeling of dropping and opening in chest voice accommodates the sound and is a lot healthier too. Tip two, it's called chest voice for a reason. Now I didn't come up with these terms, chest voice, head voice, mix. It can be very confusing. I prefer more specific things like thyroarytenoid dominant production. But it's what we got because it's what they named it back in the day. Why did they do it? Because when we're in chest voice, we feel conductive vibrations of the chest. Try this out. Hey, hey. Great. Now, hey, hey. Nice. You feel more of those vibrations when you're in chest voice. So it can be a good indication to you of when you're in chest. Tip number three, the audacity of the breath. From day one on this show, we've talked about great breathing technique, good breath support. So you know that singing relies on a slow, small, steady stream of breath. But chest voice is a little bit different. We still want our breath into the rib cage and the low abdominals, but with chest voice, we can be a little bit more bold, a little more intense, a little more audacious with our breath. We can use just a little bit more, and that will actually encourage chest voice more than the other vocal registers. Tip number four, have no fear, chest voice is here. One of the biggest reasons that singers can't sing in chest voice is actually a mental block. They judge the sound and say it sounds bad, sounds wrong, sounds ugly, sounds like too much, sounds like a sound I don't want other people to hear me make. But I promise you, chest voice is not a register that you can be shy and tentative with. We're gonna do an exercise in a minute and you have to make not just a joyful noise, but actually a bold noise. You have to let it out and have no fear or else chest voice ain't gonna happen. Tip number five, take it easy. The reason some people are afraid of chest voice is they've been told it's bad for them. It's very much not bad for you, not for males, not for females. But what is bad is doing chest voice all the time and doing it too loud and too high and just too much. But as long as you take it easy and you're sensitive to your voice and you develop the other registers of your voice alongside chest voice, everything's gonna work better than ever. With that in mind, let's do our vocal exercise now. This is gonna be yo on a five one. It sounds like this. Yo, yo. And so you're gonna speak a yo on pitch. We're gonna start with guys, then bring in the ladies as we go. Guys down here. Yo, yo. Here we go. Nice. Yo, yo. That's it. some ladies. Yo, yo. Right. That's right. Yo, yo. Let's lose the guys. Correct, ladies. Awesome. Let's bring back the guys. Yo, yo. Yes. Good for you. Nice and bold. Awesome. A few left. Yo, yo. Last. Yo, yo. Wonderful job with that. And so, this is just the first part of our Vocal Register World Tour. First stop, chest voice. I hope that's been helpful to you guys today as singers. If you have questions that you'd like to see us answer on the show, you can send an email to questions at voicelessonstotheworld.com.
And you know I encourage you. Don't lose the joy. Don't lose the passion. Don't let people tell you you can't sing. You and I both know that's not true. Get with a great voice teacher near you, or if you're in New York or you'd like to Skype with one of our staff, check out newyorkvocalcoaching.com. If you'd like a vocal course you can do in the comfort of your own home, the Voice Lessons to the World Vocal Course is a 12-part course that takes you on a journey from beginning to master level vocal exercises. You can check that out at voicelessonstotheworld.com. And if you'd like free daily vocal tips sent to you every day, sign up at dailyvocaltips.com. I'm Justin Stoney. Until next time, make a joyful noise. Old Manny River, that old Manny River. Our question for this week comes from Matthew M. in San Diego, California. And Matthew writes, get this. Dear Justin, I'm learning how to sing to propose to my girlfriend. Dear Justin, I've heard that if you can speak it, you can sing it. But what if you don't like the sound of your speaking voice? Now, Heidi, this is just a spectacular question because you're right. There's a lot of crossover between singing and speech.